It is finally time for us to prove the consistency lemma and finish up completeness. I know these are a lot of videos, and I'm going to make a note at the end of the video that I just will repeat then. I guess I'll tell you now. A lot of the stuff that you've seen, you probably are not going to have to prove on an exam. You may have to prove one of these theorems that we've done, but to prove the whole thing of completeness without having any of these theorems as assumptions is probably not going to happen. But I do think it's good if you learn all this. Uh, we're going to speed through a couple things really quick here because at this point I think most of it's intuitive. So let's get on with this. We're going to let gamma star be our maximally consistent set. And we're going to let this variable a star assign truth values of 1 to each sentence if that sentence is a member of gamma star. Now we do this with induction, but I'm going to skip the induction and we're going to go over the basics of what we're doing here. So for each connective, we need to prove that alpha is in gamma star, essentially. So I'm using the AND case. I'm not going to do the other cases, but you need to prove OR, the arrow, and negation. So you just assume that alpha is equal to Q and R in here. And you say that alpha is in the set gamma star. That's what you want to prove. So you say, okay, well, it's true in this other set A star. Okay, if it's true in A star, then Q is true in A star, and R is true in A star. And because A star is a subset of gamma star, then Q is going to be true in gamma star, and R is going to be true in gamma star. Therefore, Q and R are going to be in gamma star. And then you have to prove the false side, too. So, really, you're just extending the truth in A to being a member of gamma. And you do this for all four cases, and then you can claim that a maximally consistent set is consistent. So I know there's a little bit here, but the consistency lemma, there really wasn't much to do after you've proven everything in the fourth video. So now we're going to go back four videos, back to when we introduced completeness. This was the second theorem. This isn't completeness, but we need to prove this. For any set gamma of sentences, if gamma is consistent, then gamma is truth functionally consistent. So... We have the syntax entailing or proving the semantics. Okay. So every set of sentences gamma that is consistent is a subset of sentences that are maximally consistent. This was theorem 1.5, I think in video 2 or 3. And we know that every set of sentences that is maximally consistent is truth functionally consistent. So this is the syntax to entailment relationship. So essentially the first one says if we have gamma we can extend it to gamma star and we know that gamma star is also going to be truth functionally consistent now. Therefore every set of sentences that is consistent, so if we say okay if we have some consistent set gamma then we know it's going to be a subset of some truth functionally consistent set. So we could say, let's pick an arbitrary set sigma. Then what we can do is we can say, well, you know, it's going to be a subset of some bigger set sigma star that is truth functionally consistent. That means it entails everything that is consistent. And because that entails everything consistent, the smaller set is also going to do that. So sigma is going to do it. Therefore, any set is going to also be truth functionally consistent. And if you've been following the four videos, this sentence, what I just said, will probably make sense. If you didn't understand everything I said, that sentence is going to make very little sense. And I'm sorry, at this point, there is nothing I can do about that. You need to go back and watch those videos, or try to capture what's going on here. Here's the full completeness proof. If gamma entails alpha, then gamma proves alpha. That's what we want to know. So first, we assume 
that OK. We have gamma entailing alpha. So that means that if we have gamma and not alpha, then it's going to be inconsistent. Actually, wait, this should be just a regular. It should tell, it's tell something false. Since alpha is in gamma, and we know that alpha and not alpha will entail the falsum, therefore gamma union not alpha will entail the falsum. This is pretty much saying the same thing. Okay, so because of that and the theorem that we just proved, we now know that this also means that gamma union not alpha proves the falsum. That's what we just did. That's what the past four videos were about. So now we know that alpha must be inside of gamma, therefore gamma can prove alpha. So we have this completeness proof that says if it's truth functionally consistent, then it's consistent. Or rather, if gamma truth functionally proves alpha, or I should say entails alpha, then gamma proves alpha. So the system is complete. And that was five videos of the completeness proof. It is long. Predicate logic completeness is longer. I will not cover it. I will not cover predicate logic soundness either. In fact, we're going to be starting that next video, just starting the basics of predicate logic. But you would not cover that in an intro logic course. This is meant to be a companion to introduction to logic with a little bit of meta theory. This is the little bit of meta theory part, the past eight videos. So we're going to go back to proofs and other things, but likely you're not going to see more than one or two of these proofs on an exam unless you're taking an axiomatic course or an advanced logic course. Perhaps an introduction to formal logic course is about the about where you'd see these full proofs on exams. And even then, your whole exam would literally just be probably this one question. So that was completeness. If you have any any questions about any step, just post it in the comments on the corresponding video. If you post them here on this video, yeah, sure, I'll answer them. But if there's one part you specifically don't get, find the video that it's in so that way you know, other people can see that same problem that you might be having right in the comments there, and that'd be perfect. Doesn't really matter, though. Whatever you want. So next time, we're going to begin quantificational logic, and that's going to be fun, because we get to see where propositional logic fails. And that is always the best part, to see, hey, we just did this system for 18 videos for, like, seven weeks in a course, and now you're telling me that there's major flaws and it doesn't capture all of the English language and everything we want to do. Yeah, that's pretty much exactly what I'm telling you. And we're going to see a new system that will let us explain and talk about more in the English language in the next video.